Christy, you you just got some insight into our relationship. When one of us rants about something, the other one does nothing to calm the other one down. Instead, we give each other more points to just keep going with it. We jump on the rant bandwagon with the other person. I'm like, yeah, and what about this? I'm sorry, the rant wagon. Rant wagon. Rant wagon. Yeah. (laughs) And what about this? But Uh what about this? But what about this? I hate their stupid faces. Oh, yeah, their faces are so dumb. Their faces are so stupid. That's how uh, the two of us roll, because we're united together against the rest of the world. (laughs) It's great. (laughs) I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I, I have a topic for Keelan. No, I don't. I'm, I, I don't know. want to rant. <laughs> but I'm, I'm but I have. He wants to be chill. Okay, if you don't want to rant about this, I completely understand, and we'll let it go. But I have the perfect rant topic for you: bananas. I don't like them. <laughs> they're poison. I don't understand why you like them. They're not poison. But they're, they're delicious. delicious. They really are. They're poison. They're awful. They're terrible. They're squishy and they smell. I don't understand why. <laughs> have you seen? Them? I don't know the guy's name off off of um, what's the mustache guy off of uh, that show y'all watch? I can't think of what it's called. Um, Archer? No, no, no. no. It, they've seen it. We have not oh, seen it. Oh, I see. Magnum PI. Oh, Parks and Rec. <laughs> Parks and Rec. Oh, Parks. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You seen the scene where the guy's trying to eat the banana? The oh, guy, what's that guy's name? Yeah, that's Ron. Ron Swanson. Ron, Ron Swanson. Yeah. yeah. Tries to eat the that's banana. That's how I feel about bananas. He just he tries so hard he just can't do it. He finally puts it on a burger. <laughs> 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 I can deal with that. Yeah. I could see you do something like that. I love Ron Swanson. And he he has bacon hidden in the walls. Emergency bacon. <laughs> Emergency bacon hidden in the walls. As we all should. True story. So if you have topics you would like to hear us rant about in more detail, be sure and post in the forums or comment on video or tweet us or email us or any of those things. Reach out. Reach out and touch someone in a not creepy way, please. Just the name of of this particular food is upsetting to me. (laughs) But apparently, black pudding, aka blood sausage. Oh, it's so good. Can be useful. It's so good. Chris McCabe, 70, of England, escaped a frigid death thanks to his own quick thinking in the middle of December. He owns a butcher shop, and he had entered the walk-in freezer behind him when the door slammed behind him. Ordinarily, this wouldn't have been a problem, as there's a release button inside the freezer. But the button was frozen solid. So, he looked around and saw the very last blood sausage, which he used as a battering ram. (laughs) To unstick the button. Uh, He said, they are a big, long stick. You can just get your hand around. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) We are so 12. Oh, my gosh. I used it like the police use a battering ram to break locks in. Black pudding saved my life without a doubt. He believes that he would have died within a half an hour in the negative four freezer. Wow. Of course, that's probably Celsius. Yeah. 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 But still, freezing. I just and want- at 70, that's going to affect him more than, than others. Mm. I just want to say that while I was in London, I had the full English breakfast. Blood sausage is amazing. The thing that tastes so delicious when you cook up like the steak and all that, the juices in there, that's the cooked blood. And it's so yummy. I can't so I yummy. can't get on board with that. Yeah, I just it, so good. You know, it's one of those things. If somebody gave it to me blind, gave me no indication what it was, and I ate it, I might like it. But just, just no, like why do you have to name it I, that? I mean, could just call well, it some kind of. I know what it is, and I know how it's made. But hearing your description of that makes me never want to eat it. Yeah, it's. It though like if i describe to you the way that 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 sausage that you have out in the car is actually made you would probably get grossed out see there is some I blood in there i don't want to know how the sausage is made <laughs> that's, he, he that's why that phrase enjoy exists it. joey pants in the matrix had it right ignorance is bliss yes <laughs> joey pants is that his joey name pants. joey pantalone 
Yeah. The actor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Joe, Joe Pantalon. But yeah. And Joey Pants. That's Joey Pants. Cypher. Yep. There you go. I couldn't think of his name. In the... So what is an adult problem that nobody prepared you for? Life. <laughs> Pretty much. Just adulting. Well, uh, I did not realize until I was probably 19 or almost 20. It was right before we got married. And I went to the bank because I felt that, that there had been an error in my account. And this was before you could do the online banking and check your statement. So you had to check your statement that they mailed you against what you had in your check register. And no one had properly taught me how to use a checkbook register. Like it was, I just did the best I could based on what I saw in the checkbook register. And the lady at the bank sat there for 15 minutes and showed me how to properly track things in the checkbook register the way that they're designed to and made me feel like a giant idiot because I didn't know how to do this. And eventually she got up. She goes, I just, I don't have time to sit here and explain to you how bank accounts work and left. So I closed my bank account from that bank and went to another one. And then I went online and learned how to actually use a checkbook register. Wow. It was, it was a hard time. I'm a bad adult. Like there's a lot of things <laughs> I just don't know how to do. Of course now I can't think of any examples, but change a flat. Now I do know how to we do know that. How to, yeah. But I was going to do that. I, I mean, pretty much anything else on a car though. I mean, I know where the oil goes. I know where the gas goes. Uh, he knows to check fluid levels, but beyond that. Yeah, that's about it. And just a lot of of everyday sort of survive by yourself kind of things that you don't always think about. Funny, I never actually lived on my own. Yeah. I went from college to being married. And he he lived basically at his parents or at his sisters during breaks and stuff. Yeah. And so I've never had to fend for myself. I've lived very little on my own, probably no more than three months. You lived on your own more than I have, though. You think? Am I, I the so. only I've person? I've never lived by myself. Oh, I've really? never lived by myself. I lived well, with my parents, and then I lived with a roommate in Austin, and then I lived with my parents, and then I lived with my sisters. And then I lived with my parents, and then I lived with Carol, and then I lived with my parents, and then I lived with you. I'm the only one at the table that has lived any length of time on their own. Well, and do you count kids? Because the only time I've ever been alone, a single, I had children there. Most yeah, of the time, well, that so. that counts because no, you're the not, you're not. the responsible adult. Yeah. yeah, but that was a very very short time, just between the time I got divorced until I sold my house and moved in with my parents that's three or four months at the most. So, yeah, I do think, I think I'm, I'm not too far off from where Ryan is as far as like adulting goes, because like I said, I've never lived by myself and I've never been responsible for the majority of my own finances. Mm -hmm. I mean, never when I was living with my parents, of course, my parents handled finances, living with my sisters, both of them, you know, the apartments were in their names. I paid them, rent mm -hmm. they you know all that kind of stuff and then you know living with ronnie ronnie handles all the finances so financially i probably could handle it but i don't it would be really hard yeah you know? but one thing that the world did not prepare me for as an adult was driving on the highway <laughs> at all <Yeah. laughs> I, I i don't drive on the highway well that's one thing i say about living in a small town is that let's see for you you grew up in a larger city yeah for us you know our whole, when we were going through driver's education, things like that, our biggest challenge was an interstate, mm -hmm. not, not even a, uh, not interstate, I'm sorry, a state highway. So driving, people who live in large cities and learn to drive in heavy traffic, I, I don't understand how they do mm -hmm. that. Because we, we drove, drove around rural America and then occasionally we'd get up on the highway and drive, you know, a four lane highway. Mm -hmm. And that was all of our experience until we got our driver's license. Well, you know, like, and he lived in Oklahoma city for four years and lived in California for a while and still like hates driving like in Dallas. I, I'm, I get frustrated driving in Dallas, but I I'm fine doing it. You know, I, I grew up in Dallas and I drove, you know, and what's ironic about this is I've never driven 35, 635 
I, I've driven 35 once, and that was a very terrifying experience that I do not want to ever relive. And yet, I can drive 121, I can drive 380, I can drive Beltline. Those roads are actually, when it comes to things like car accidents and things like that, all of those roads are worse, but I'm more comfortable driving on those. I would say on the same subject, this is kind of the same subject, I've found that people who have a lot of money tend to, to know how to do less things than the rest of us. I was listening to a radio show one time and they were talking about moving to a new place and having the movers come in, pack up their stuff, put it in boxes, put it on the truck, unload it, unpack it, hang the pictures on the wall for them because they don't know how to hang up a, put a nail on the wall. I mean, these guys were so spoiled and they act like that is everyday life for every most people. And I'm like, no, I, so not. when you don't have any money, you have to learn to do a lot of things you know you could hire somebody to do mm-hmm. if yeah you- i work with a nurse that her husband makes enough money that she probably wouldn't have to work but she does and like she went through school to get her nursing degree and everything so i think they could obtain a higher level of living but but she has a nanny and like i say things about oh i gotta get up because i've got to go pick up the kids from school or i gotta do this or that and she's like that's what you have a nanny for and i was like <laughs> i'm sorry no my my husband's a stay-at-home dad that's what i have a stay-at-home dad husband for even that like when people don't have like when they have the two income households and it's like they have kids in daycare and stuff like that and they're having to juggle all that and people are like well that's what you you hire help for you know I was yeah like, sure no <laughs> uh, like yeah. i said that is a just a level of of income that I I can't comprehend. No, I've never would, been even close to I would like to, to try. Mm-hmm. I would love to try. I would love for the Lord to test so, me with a great sum of money and see if I remain the same person. That'd be great. <laughs> I, I think I would. <laughs> I feel like I would too, but... Yeah. Well, here's a story full of irony. One of Quebec City's iconic tourist attractions is its Ice Hotel, the 45-room Hotel de Glace. But on January 9th, the hotel's most dreaded disaster, a fire, broke out in one of the guest rooms. The manager admitted that when I received the phone call, they had to repeat twice that there was a fire in the ice hotel. Predictably, the flames did not spread and caused little damage to the structure, although smoke spread throughout the hotel and residents were evacuated. In a room that is made of ice and snow, there are a few clues to look at. The manager said, although each room has candles and the hotel is considering the possibility that one of them caused the fire. Okay, so this is one of those places they build every year. I've seen art galleries and stuff where they go in and they'll carve them out of or, you know, out of solid ice or snow. And they do a different one every year or something like that. See, that, I'm thinking uh, this is like the, that one in, it was it Die Another Day, where they it was in an Arctic area like somewhere that's cold year round and they created this hotel and i was thinking something like that but well quebec doesn't have places to stay cold year round does it well canada has places that stay cold year round let's see i'm looking at their website oh hotel to glass december 23rd okay i'm sorry it actually says december 20 23th (laughs) (laughs) to to march 25th so there is only a window okay Their rooms run between 209 for the Nordic Escape to 499.50 for the Valcartier Experience. Not bad at all. I mean, there's like a of, great wolf, wolf lodge. Yeah, motels stay. around here that have over $200 rooms. That's a weird place to go on fire. <laughs> it's a very weird place to go on fire. Wow, I can't believe it took that long for us yeah. to figure that one out. Oh my gosh. Apparently, they have an indoor water park. I don't feel I would enjoy that. (laughs) Like there's in... um, It's called the shrivel zone. (laughs) In Vegas, one of the nurses that I work with went to an ice bar that they had in Grapevine. There's a big like ice sculpture thing that gets put on every year. And people have to put on the giant parkas that the place provides, which I think that's just head lice waiting to happen. (laughs) Um, Or bed bugs. Yeah, something like that. So like they put those parkas on that they provide you and they give you blankets. And she's like, it's 
freezing in there. It's not actually fun. She's like, but it's amusing for a little bit because they have the ice luge shot thing where you they yeah. pour the shot at the top of the little ice luge and then you catch it in your mouth at the bottom. Mm-hmm. She's like, but all the tables and all of the chairs are made out of ice. So you have to put like doubled up blanket down so you can sit in your chair and sit and shiver and drink freezing cold drinks. And sounds it just terrible. sounds like a nightmare to me. It sounds completely yeah. miserable. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know the last story that we had from China involving uh, a medical issue was unpleasant. Uh. So here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> an unnamed 41-year-old Chinese woman who had been suffering from fevers and breathing problems for six years. Oh, geez. How is she not dead? Finally went for a checkup in early January at a hospital in China. (laughs) (laughs) Doctors x-rayed and found an inch-long chili pepper in her right lung. What? What? The news reported that Dr. Luo Lifeng, maybe... Tried to remove the pepper using a probe, but was forced to operate because it was lodged too deep to reach. He speculated that she had inhaled the pepper and then forgotten about it. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a rough day. I was thinking maybe uh, she had inhaled the seed and it had grown uh, into a pepper. But it, that wouldn't be possible. Was it preserved? It, it could happen. It's organic matter. An, an inch long? I mean, that is, oh, that is a bad day. I don't, yeah. I don't feel like a lung would be a con. A, I, it's a, it's a great it's slightly moist, and it's uh. But there's no sunlight. There's and air. There would have to be a plant and it would, leaves. It and, would and, sprout. And well, things I've, would have to. I've happen. heard of of things growing like fungal stuff. You know, grows yeah. in like watermelon lunch. seeds. They, yeah, but fungus can, doesn't. Can we just agree that chili peppers don't belong in a lung? <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> it's a good I, point. I actually had a patient that had to go have his pacemaker removed because vegetation was growing on it. So. Yeah. Say what? My yes. question is, though, I mean, the chili pepper must have been well preserved and wasn't rotting in her lung. It might have been pickled. And... <laughs> it could have been a this pickled is, pepper. This is a horrible subject. <laughs> and Peter Piper <laughs> just plucked it out of her plural space. <laughs> out of her plural space. Well, plural is like around the lungs, plural. I, I know, but that's just, yeah. just funny. I thing. have heard of kids getting uh, watermelon seeds in the nose and it would sprout, sprout in their yeah. sinuses and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's a terrible, that's a bad day. 